hello everyone uh, we hope uh, you're all doing good and today so on behalf of cisa we welcome you all to the webinar for preventing a ransomware attack is within our reach so let's understand this from our expert we have today as on how we can prevent that and a quick introduction first of all for myself i'm bharat malik i work on business development team here at cisa and we'll be moderating this session today for you guys so quick facts about cisa cisa is a global payment security specialist company serving across a wide range of industries with a footprint in more than 35 plus countries cisa has a unique expertise in payment security domain and forensic investigation as well with the robust security posture is definitely possible with cisa's exceptional set of services like for example we are an approved global payment forensic investigator and we have resolved some of the highly complex cases as well and not only this we are also one of the 28 organizations to be a part of pci gear committee for the second time in a row so there are many things which we can do to prevent a ransomware attack on a business absolutely yes so from today's webinar what we will be learning so three main parts of the learnings that uh, the key highlights which we'll be taking out from this webinar is how our ransom ransomware attack works and its in impact and third point would be on a flawless solution to fend off such particular threats i'm pleased to introduce today's speaker mr kaushik for today's webinar kaushik is not only our principal consultant but our business unit head as well and he has handled several information security audits also kaushik has successfully implemented assessment programs at leading banks third party payment processor bpos airlines payment gateways etc he is also a authorized lead trainer for cisa cbsi it's a, a payment security training program for imparting the knowledge on the payment security implementation and what a qsc can look out for a successful audit and certification from a compliance perspective so before i hand over the platform to the speaker i have a few housekeeping items to cover about the webinar platform today so this session is going for uh, will will be of 60 minutes including the 10 minutes for the q and a all the attendees will be muted automatically to have a smooth flow of the presentation and you can also submit your questions that arise during the webinar through the q and a section located below your screen and these q and a will be i mean these questions will be answered at the end of the webinar so i'd like to welcome kaushik to take over the platform thank you so much thanks a lot bharat uh, and i hope i'm audible to all of you yeah please kaushik all right sure thanks a lot so uh, as already uh, iterated by uh, bharat we we wish you all a uh, safe and uh, let's say um, healthy morning today uh, thanks a lot for joining in today's session uh, myself kaushik uh, i'll be leading this particular uh, session for the day and today we'll be uh, discussing or let's say we'll be uh, providing you insights about ransomware i think ransomware today like the way we save for many of uh, let's say the highly skilled individuals in our industry right that this this particular person doesn't need an introduction in a very similar manner today if i'm talking about ransomware ransomware doesn't need an in introduction at all and that's how we have custom crafted this entire session as well we are not going to tell you the basic definitions of ransomware not at all we'll be talking you or let's say we'll be talking with you about the business impact about how exactly organizations are getting impacted due to this ransomware attack which is happening every now and then we'll be unearthing a few of the recent cases which has happened across the globe and then we'll be talking about how exactly you and your organization can be prevented from these types of ransomware attacks so first of all we'll be discussing about the current trends and pattern uh, where we uh, where, where we'll discuss about the attack pattern the global uh, proliferation as well uh, then we'll be talking about the basics of a ransomware what 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 exactly is actually ransomware uh, and the recent cases as well which has happened across the globe post which we'll be discussing about the 
identification, detection, and prevention. So if you'll see the structure today, the structure is first of all, we are telling you, we are we are giving you insights about the current, the current scenario. What exactly is happening today? Once we have given you the background, the history, the current scenario, then I'll tell you that okay, what exactly is meant by a ransomware at a very, very high level. And then we'll be again discussing a few case scenarios. So it's it goes, uh, let's say it, it goes very easily inside our minds that okay, yes, this is how exactly a ransomware works. And once we have, uh, let's say, addressed the background, the history, and the core proliferation about a ransomware, that is where we'll be pinching in and we'll be addressing the most important thing of this particular webinar, which is the identification, detection, and prevention of malware. How exactly can you and me or how exactly can your and our organizations can be prevented in the same so on that particular note let's start today's session current trends and patterns if you'll see today the the the, the ransomware across the globe you will see that it just the third quarter of 2020 around 199.7 million close to around 200 million ransomware attacks have happened just to give you a few highlighters you might have heard about the toll group. If not, then actually a toll group is uh, one of the uh, one of the world's leader in the de delivery services. It's, it's it's a firm based out of Australia, basically, which have their huge operations in Australia and the Southeast Asia as well. So basically, late in Jan two two thousand twenty, uh, Networker ransomware uh, actually was. Uh, let's say networker ransomware impacted these guys due to which the customers were unable to send receive or track their shipments now they had operations or let's they have operations in over 50 countries spanned across five continents all of them got impacted which resulted in around a thousand servers getting impacted due to this particular ransomware all staffs worldwide were asked to shut off their system, to shut off their servers, disconnect systems from the company's network. And believe me or not, Jan 2020, they were impacted with this networker ransomware and they got, let's say, uh, rid of that particular ransomware. But later in May 2020, they again got hit by a Nefilm ransomware on their online portal, which got impacted, let's say, which impacted one of the Let's say the largest uh, database, the, the, the largest servers which they had. Similarly, there are so many use cases which I can tell you which have happened in just 2020 ago. I, I, I do not even need to reiterate to you guys uh, what was the impact of WannaCry ransomware when it happened around, let's say, uh, three to four to five years back to six years back. It costed billions of dollars across the world. And if even if you'll see today, uh, like the second line item, which says over here, academic research work was also compromised where the university had to pay around 1.14 uh, million. Which particular university we are talking about over here? We're talking about UCSF. You're talking about University of California in San Francisco, which is one of the world's best medical research university across the globe. There were COVID-19, you can say, the researches which were going on. And at the same time, they got impacted with the ransomware. However, fingers crossed, the COVID-19, that particular research area was not impacted due to the same. Many of the attackers actually took advantage as well of the COVID-19. And they uh, made sure that, okay, these uh, people actually went ahead and uh, opened malicious emails by stating that, okay, this particular emails contains attachments, which has the remedy, which has the cure of COVID-19, which has happened across many different uh, you can say uh, uh, ports many, many many different places across the world as well. And if you'll see from a financial perspective, till now at least around 144.2 million on costs have been spent, where the organizations were trying to recover from the ransomware attack which has happened to them. So today, ransomware is not just uh, let's say a means to get the uh, money out of your, or let's say out of your organization. It has impacted 
the availability of the systems the availability of a uh, uh, of, of a, let's say a particular uh, server, a particular application, a particular thing, which is being used by common people like let's say you and me, which brings us a very, very, uh, you can say important use case, which happened actually in uh, Germany. So uh, in, the, in, in the university hospital of Dusseldorf, uh, there was a lady who was, uh, let's say going in, uh, with an ambulance or with uh, from 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 an ambulance to a nearby hospital, but due to a ransomware attack, all the nearby hospitals were out of zone, or let's say they were not working because all the systems were encrypted, or let's say they were not able to access any data, which led to the diversion to another hospital which was around 30 kilometers away, and this was recorded as one of the first fatality which was caused due to a ransomware attack. And that particular lady was not saved. Now that is the impact of ransomware across the industries right now. We cannot just say that, okay, let's say I'm from a hospitality or let's say I'm a normal, uh, let's say uh, a person, wow, why exactly will I be impacted? Not at all. All of us are getting impacted. And if you'll see the global trends, the BFSI has seen around a 520% increase in ransomware attacks just in 2020 alone. The same goes with the supply chain as well, where uh, two large uh, food, food distributors paid around 7.5 million ransom for around 2,000 files. The same goes for the fintech as well. Around 100 classic uh, financial institutions, including PayPal and cryptocurrency apps, were actually uh, impacted to the same. And ransomware as a service is not... Uh, something which, uh, let's say, is not a common phenomenon. It is a very common phenomenon today. And actually, ransomware as a service helps even the novice, the, 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 the script kiddies, what we say, which have no idea about even the coding, the, uh, the, the, the malware and all, can just easily perform these ransomware attacks because that is coming so much handy. And that is the very reason why, if you see from Black, for the, uh, the the graphs around government institutions are getting impacted at the highest, followed by manufacturing, followed by services, healthcare, education, technology, logistics, retail, and the others to follow. Which means that the ransomware today is not just focusing on just encrypting your files. They are following a twofold approach. So let's first of all understand the basics of an, uh, a ransomware attack. That, okay, how exactly a ransomware attack happens? Let's say a particular one, let's say one on uh, unauthorized person will send you some spam message or let's say spam email. Now that particular spam email, first of all, has to override or let's say has to bypass your spam filters as well. And of course, they will have the sophistication to bypass your spam filters. Once they have bypassed, they will go or let's say they will reach the user system like let's say yours and mine system or let's say yours and mine email uh, inbox. Once they have reached this particular thing, the phase one has already been passed by. Now everything relies on the awareness training of that particular individual. Now, now the technology cannot do anything. It has already gone into the inbox. So the user will hover the malicious link. It will bypass the spam filter. And accordingly, let's say a command or let's say a PowerShell gets launched onto your local system. Now, these ransomwares, these, these malwares, don't just start by encrypting all the systems directly. No, they, they, they cannot. Because first of all, you also have to understand the risk surface area over here. They will not just be focusing on one particular system. They are looking at your entire corporate network. It means that once they go inside your environment, they will be launching a PowerShell. They will be establishing a command control server through which they can operate your entire corporate network through which they can, let's say, uh, uh, focus or impact or uh, compromise your entire corporate network. Post which they will be encrypting the confidential data, which is there on the victim system and on the network as well. They'll be performing encryption. Then they'll be sending out the random message that, okay, let's say all uh, of your files have been encrypted and blah, blah, blah. And then accordingly, a ransomware attack has happened at the end of the day. So what is the impact today? 
75% of the ransomware victims lost access to the data for more than two days or 67% of the businesses permanently lost all or part of their data, which is a huge thing, which is not just, uh, that is something which is just given for the namesake. So the impact of ransomware is huge. But one particular thing which all of us have to remember at the end of the day, that we don't have to pay the ransom. Because even if you pay the ransom, you have no idea, you have no proof that that particular, uh, let's say, individual or let's say that particular ransomware group uh, will give the entire data to you. They will not have a copy of it and so forth. So this ransomware impact actually goes on with a temporary or permanent loss of your company's data, a complete shutdown of your company's operation. It resulted in financial losses. Uh, in, in, and also, of course, uh, impacts the losses due to the downtime as well, which may cost thousands of dollars. Which actually reminds me of one particular ransomware attack, which happened just, uh, uh, I think, a few months ago, maybe. Uh, it was a huge as well, as, as, as usual. And uh, that was with uh, Garmin, G-A-R-M-I-N. I don't know how many of you know about Garmin or not, but these guys actually provide... Uh, uh, massive global, uh, let's say the GPS navigation. Now the GPS navigation, the variable technologies are where these, uh, let's say the Garmin guys uh, excel. And these, guys and these guys got impacted due to this. So just try and uh, see the, the extent of this ransomware attack, which could have happened. Now all of you, you and me, let's say, are wearing, let's say, something or the other from Garmin, like let's say a, a, a watch, a smartwatch from Garmin, right? And accordingly, the ransomware might hit directly my smartwatch. To see the extent of this particular ransomware attack, these kinds of attacks. And Garmin was not just on just the wearable technologies for you and me. They also had a few apps, like let's say known as Fly Garmin or Garmin Pilot app. Now these applications, these systems were actually used by the aviation industry. And if let's say the pilots, the pilots who are actually going to sync their uh, systems, their applications with the Garmin server, if they would have done so, then even the flights would have got impacted, which would have caused a huge catastrophe. That is the extent which we are looking at today. So if you'll see in the Asia Pacific market in the uh, Asia region, around 82% uh, Indian firms were attacked or let's say and uh, paid as well. Around eight CR worth of uh, ransom on average. 45% of Singapore companies uh, got attacked um, and they took around five to 10 days uh, nearly to recover. And the top country which have got affected in Q3 is actually Sri Lanka which uh, let's say let run 436% increase in these types of ransomware attacks. <clears throat> so if you'll see the uh, heat map on the right hand side, you will see the darker it goes, that is the region where it get, it's getting more impacted. So if you'll see the, the, the Singapore region, the Indonesia, the, uh, the Arthur Sea, the, uh, that, 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 that particular area, the, the Guana and all the other regions are getting impacted so much due to this ransomware attack coming every now and then. Now, this particular ransomware attack, of course, will give sleepless nights to all the C-level executives because those guys are the management. Those guys have to govern all of the security controls, all of the technologies which are getting implemented every now and then inside your organization. And believe me, it's just like a ticking bomb which will turn the entire organization into a black hole. So the real, real question over here is that is preventing a ransomware attack within our reach? Can we prevent a ransomware attack uh, before even it happens to my organization? The answer is yes, absolutely. You can do that. And how exactly can we do that? Let's first of all understand from the basics of a ransomware that okay what exactly is a ransomware so basically a ransomware is a combination of a ransom like let's say somebody would uh, blackmail us and would ask for money 
okay and a combination of a software a software like let's say an uh, uh, adobe which you might be having on your system or let's say a normal vlc media player which might be you you might be having on a system a combination of these two is known as a ransomware very simple how does it matter to uh, let's say the businesses today i don't need to even give you an example i just gave you so many examples right now that how exactly organizations are getting impacted and how exactly ransomware finds way to businesses through the emails through the drive by downloads vulnerability exploitation and hence so forth there are countless ways in which a ransomware can penetrate inside your organization and believe me you will have no idea about it let let me give you a few examples based upon the uh, let's say the recent study uh, not not more than i think 3 or 4 months back uh, by my, microsoft uh, the internet facing systems were majority of the time the entry points for all of these use cases it started with the rdp or the vdi without a multi factor authentication the end of life servers such as server 2003 and 2008 with weak passwords bang on compromised ransomware inside and you are gone misconfigured ias or web servers electronic health record software backup servers system management servers all of these and one of the most lethal uh, attack which happened actually from 2009 to 20 were from a citrix based vulnerability as well and if i remember it correctly it was an application delivery controller vulnerability the the adc vulnerability which led to huge compromises many of us think that okay as soon as i have vpn i'm completely secure i am able to secure my entire organization my entire connection and all but guess what pulse secure vpn with uh, let's say an event id or cv id of 2019 uh, 11510 again that particular thing got impacted or that particular thing got exploited and accordingly uh, organizations got impacted with ransomware the few common tools which are being uh, used by uh, these types of attackers will be minicals and cobalt strike so what exactly are these don't don't go with the fancy names these are just there so that they can perform network reconnaissance and data exfiltration just network reconnaissance and data exfiltration right it will impact your entire organization and the entire organization's data will be gone and this and these guys will not just let's say uh take the data out or let's say encrypt and gone no not at all they will always gain access to a highly privileged admin and they will maintain presence on some endpoints as well which you haven't identified till now they will never leave your premises just by giving you let's say that okay now particular your, your systems have been uh, encrypted and give me this particular money and accordingly i'll go nord or they will maintain their persistence over there okay and that is where let's say we we go into a myth versus reality phase that okay what exactly uh, the uh, world thinks and how, what exactly is there like let's say ma majority of us think that they go ran ransomware zero day attack which is absolutely not possible it's not just a zero day attack of course a few use cases a few vulnerable machines i might be able to exploit via a zero day attack but not all of them and that is why let's say you will see that attackers can choose from hundreds and hundreds of vulnerabilities that are there across the industry majority of the systems which have gone compromised were because of the unpatched ias servers unpatched uh, apache servers untouched uh, windows servers which led to let's say the compromise of these systems myth the endpoint protection gives all the insights whatever you require is it not at all okay why because men, majority of the uh, companies actually do not even explore this particular thing that uh, where from from where exactly the problem has come from where exactly it originated why exactly it originated means the rca of that particular thing we are just relying on an endpoint security solution which is not which is not at all a protection solution firewalls and other perimeter solutions are all you need not at all majority of the use cases i'll tell you attacks have been successful because of poor or outdated perimeter security 
Many of the times we, we perform assessments, many of the times we provide consultation supports to organizations. And uh, there we see that, uh, let's say, organizations come to us and say that uh, my firewall, let's say, my systems, uh, my perimeter security has reached end of life. But there are no patches being released from the past, whatever, let's say, time period. There are no critical patches released from the past, whatever time period. Do you think you can rely on just these nomenclatures and can say that, okay, my organization, my systems are secure enough? Not at all. Majority of the organizations I do understand today are facing uh, crunch from, uh, let's say, the funds, from uh, the resources and all. But security doesn't look for these types of, let's say, uh, challenges, whatever you are having. These uh, script kiddies, these, uh, let's say, uh, hackers, these intruders, okay, will not be looking at that, okay, let's say you are having a resource crunch and they will leave you off, not at all. Administrators follow best practices all the time, every time. Is that so? Not at all. See, admins, first of all, an organization will not be having, let's say, a lot and lots of admins, right? Okay, they will always be thin in nature. They will always be too thin in nature. And accordingly, let's say organizations will be impacted. Why exactly is it so? Is it because, uh, let's say, organizations don't have that particular uh, spend so, so that they can uh, spend on these many things? Not at all. Organizations can spend. Organizations can spend a lot on these things. But they don't want to. The IT was never, a, uh, so the IT security was never a priority for them because this is not a revenue generating function this was never a revenue generating function but when now organizations are seeing that how much they are getting impacted due to the financial losses to the reputational losses that's where they got an eye and see that okay what exactly needs to be done everything okay if you have a backup but they are the last line of defense for you they are not a mitigation technique. They will just, uh, let's say, secure you from the availability factor over here. And if you think that by paying the ransomware, you'll get your data back, not at all. Criminals are untrustworthy. How can you rely on a particular person whom you don't even know, who always had a malicious intent? You thought that, okay, I will just give, uh, let's say, ransom and it's done, not at all. If you see the recent cases of ransomware which shook the world, you will see that majority of them, or let's say all of them, I should say, had the initial access with the same or the, the same line of action, like let's say an RDP brute force, a remote desktop protocol uh, brute force over there, or a vulnerable internet facing system, or weak application settings. These were the initial access for majority majority of the uh, let's say systems across the world then what was the next phase the credential theft now for credential thefts they always had something or the other that is mimikads lsa secrets a few of the tools the services which these guys have been using okay or your credential vaults majority of us have credential vaults on our system so let's say on our server which might be having a few vulnerabilities here and there because majority of us do not want to invest in it, right? We are just having, let's say, an open source or a freeware, something like that, and installed on a system. Somebody is able to compromise this, all of your credentials gone. Credentials in plain text, common phenomena, in Notepad, in Excel, and abuse of service accounts. Now, if you see abuse of service account, this is one of the, uh, let's say, one of the common phenomena in um, today's ransomware attacks where these guys are using service accounts actually to compromise systems. Now, once they have got this credentials and all, the next phase will be for the lateral movements. Now, the lateral movement is pretty easy, right? That from one network to the other, or let's say within that particular network also, I can go from one server to the other. How exactly it can be prevented? By an IP table, a host-based IP table, by a host based firewall solution by firewall d let's say but are we looking out for uh, implementing those solutions no at all because it will act so much overload it will act so much burden 
on the things believe me guys i was uh, a part of a forensic breach um, uh, case uh, for one of the uh, biggest uh, uh, merchants um, and uh, at that time when i was interacting with that particular network admin whose uh, organization got compromised um, and i said that okay why don't you implement a solution so that one particular server cannot communicate with the other till the time they do not go through a firewall rule why do not you implement this type of solution or let's say a host based firewall or an ip table something like that they said you have no idea how exactly the industry works and don't tell me how exactly my system should work or my network should work i said fine that's not an issue at all that's not something which i have to tell you and that particular organization and i was sitting over there performing a forensics or let's say not performing forensics but yeah helping uh, my team my systems over here so that they can perform forensics and i was just getting the case studies out of them and impacted with a million dollar fine at that time and that's how their uh, not network admin but the network head was talking about so you can just understand the level of sophistication what these guys are bringing on to the table right so lateral movement can happen with cobol strike wmi abuse of management tools and persistence and then it goes into persistence where they have to maintain their uh, stature inside the systems which goes with new accounts gpu changes shadow id tools schedule tasks and service registration and then you have so many malwares over here or there's so many ransomware which got impact or say which will be uh, present on those systems now if you'll see or let's say if i give you uh, one particular uh, use case scenario over here let's take maze ransomware so that uh, you guys can also understand how exactly uh, this particular this entire uh, diagram looks like so just follow the blue line to the top how exactly a maze ransomware gets inside the organization they first of all will impact an rdp brute force then they will be using a mimicads uh, let's say software for the credential threat for lateral movement they will be using cobol strike to maintain persistence they will be doing some gpo changes and accordingly a maze ransomware will get in path let's say you will have a maze ransomware inside your organization okay let's take one more let's take uh, let's say networker if you remember we just discussed networker in the very starting when we were discussing about toll group right a networker uh, let's say a particular impact which has happened so how exactly they are operating you will see that first of all they started with weak application settings the yellow one the weak application settings they also use the mimic as for credential theft then we went across and uh, let's say use uh, psx for uh, lateral movement and then they came back and uh, and they they also used wmi as well in a few cases and uh, then they performed also to maintain the persistence they perform a few service registration changes and accordingly the organization got impacted so each and every uh, you can say um, use case over here will give you a new way of thinking a new way to uh, understand how exactly these ransomwares are operating inside an organization and this is what exactly will give you the insights about how exactly to identify that a ransomware is there inside your organization or not and let's see it with this ragna locker or let's say the 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 the, the ragna uh, the, the the ransomware so if uh, let's say you know or you might have seen um there was a case study or let's say there was a, a study which was released by kaspersky which said ransomware 2.0 which around breached around 61 companies across asia pacific region where india and the australia had logged the highest incidents this was a case study which got released in november 2020 and was published in business insider and majority of the other stuffs over there now these were targeted attacks and over here they were always publishing the confidential information of uh, online if you remember the wanna cry vulnerability which happened so many years back 4 billion dollars worth of financial loss over there and now with these targeted attacks they have changed the game what exactly they are doing is that they are actually investing from themselves 
by uh, coming out with Facebook ads that the, your particular organization has got breached and this particular data is available on the public web. And that is the same thing what you will see on your screen as well. The home page of this Ragnar local uh, leak site where they have a wall of shame that if you do not, uh, let's say, pay them the ransom, then this is what exactly will happen. That you they will be listed over there, and accordingly, your uh, data will be sold to a person, or let's say, to uh, whatever person or an entity whosoever pays the highest. Now, one particular use case scenario, um, I just tend to uh, let's say go back and forth. Use case scenario was uh, one of the vulnerabilities which happened with the uh, Grubman, Shire, Mislis, and SAC. So this is a basically a US-based law firm, okay? But it was a media law firm. In May 2020, these guys got impacted. Around 756 GB of data was gone. And believe me, what all data was there? From Lady Gaga to Madonna to Elton John to Bruce Springsteen and so many. These guys didn't pay the money. And this particular group of Revel uh, ransomware uh, published around 2.4 GB of data leading to Lady Gaga. Okay. But again, these guys didn't pay the ransom. And the first auction which was put out over there, the stolen data, went around for $1 million of Madonna. All of their critical information got lost. So if you'll see in this particular ransomware, how exactly this ransomware is operating is that first of all, it will perform an initial compromise, reconnaissance, pre pre deployed task, and all. How exactly do that? It can do via any of the founded vulnerabilities, like we discussed from VDI, from this, that, everything. Phishing attacks are also one of the use cases and all. Then they will go inside the infrastructure. They are performing the data exfiltration first, guys. Please see this particular chart. They are not encrypting these systems for the very first time. They are, first of all, exfiltrating the data. Okay. And then they are deploying the ransomware and then executing. And then ransomware and the POC files goes on to dark web. And then sensitivity is published uh, if the ransom is not paid. And how exactly you'll get to know you have been compromised if you see this particular chat over there. And it says that if you are seeing this particular message, then you have been compromised. And this is what exactly you have to follow if you are compromised. They will give you, uh, let's say, the Ragna secret or the secret key using which you have to uh, interact with them. And they'll give you the Bitcoin address as well through which you have to pay if you want to pay. These are a few of the other use cases. If you identify that, yes, you are a victim, you have, uh, let's say, been compromised, or let's say your organization has been compromised, um, which is uh, quite amazing because uh, even people today as well are paying across and they think that, uh, let's say, organizations or uh, something like that, or let's say these ransomware guys will actually be very loyal to them and they will go ahead. Files that won't open get an error message uh, like this. Uh, if you find something like a dot cryptid or a dot cryptor uh, inside, uh, you can say that yes, this particular, uh, let's say, um, uh, system has got or let's say has been compromised as such. Okay. Um, so, first of all, the, 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 the real question over here comes that if so many ransomware, if so many things are happening, then how exactly you or me, let's say, how exactly you or my organization can actually understand that? Uh, uh, let's say yes. Um, uh, my my organization, my systems are getting impacted every now and then, or let's say are getting impacted. Something which you should actually focus is malicious PowerShells, Cobalt Strike, and other pen testing tools. If these tools are available inside your uh, let's say network infrastructure and all malicious PowerShells and all, there's a high probability that okay, uh, a ransomware might be happening. Okay, and of course these are without your knowledge. Credential theft activities like uh, suspicious access to uh, LSAS, that is a local security authority subsystem service. Suspicious registry modifications, tampering with a security event, USN journal. Okay, if th if these things are happening, then you need to keep an eye on, and accordingly, let's say you need to start preparing that uh, there might be a ransomware attack which is going on. So just relying on the IOCs, just relying on the indicators of uh, compromise is not a desirable solution, which you can, uh, let's say, find. 
and why exactly am i saying it is because um uh, majority of the organizations they will identify one particular system and uh, will let's say um uh, change the soft change, change the password of the particular system and that's it not at all that's not how it works because the ransomware will not just look at one single account but it will look for all the domain accounts all the accounts which uh, let's say have been logged in or say the user has logged in on a particular system it will also dump cached credentials from service accounts accounts log on to interactive rdp <clears throat> if you're looking for event id then actually you should look for event id uh, 4624 with a log on type of 2 or 10 or 4 or 5 so what exactly to do if you are affected first of all find the source perform a root cause analysis alert all of your users that is a very very important thing you have to reimage infected endpoints from the scratch at all the times you have to restore from a backup to a clean device turn all the devices and disconnect them from the uh, from the network from the servers and please remember you do not pay the ransom what are the early signs using which you can detect ransomware attacks uh, some unexpected software tools like the one which i just told you about uh, like cobalt strike malicious fast shells and all these things if they are happening uh, keep keep an eye on this mini cats these types of tools if you find you are gone uh, any new administrator accounts which have been created uh, please take a note of this okay uh, finally uh, it will disable the ad and the domain controllers and the current backup process, uh, process. Uh, detection of angry ip or advanced port scanner phishing email complaints from internal teams that you are getting a lots and lots of phishing emails it might be a ransomware attack which might be happening because even if one of your uh, individual um, uh, clicks on it or uh, let's say if it's a kind of a business email compromise a bc attack then of course uh, you will be getting impacted as your organization will be uh, impacted at that particular point in time right so um, so this was actually how exactly uh, you will detect that the organization might be getting impacted today how exactly you will prevent you have to monitor your rdp sessions um, why because the rdp sessions will tell you if something or the other is amputating a command control access for the hackers you have to scan internet facing systems for all the open rdp ports and that is very very necessary guys i'll tell you so like like shodan.io or something like that you should use so that or let's say you should uh, see to it so that uh, you can identify uh, your security posture your uh, open ports your open systems frequent software patching is a must uh, awareness training for all the employees and changing core systems passwords timely now core systems password does not just mean the admin accounts passwords and all it also means the system uh, user accounts or the the service accounts as well which i which i told you that okay are being used by ransomware every now and then okay and that's what brings us to the end of this particular session so what exactly we have studied or let's say what exactly we have gone through so far is that first of all we saw that how much or let's say what all things uh, uh, comes up with the history or let's say comes up behind the history of uh, this ransomware what all things are happening all across you all across um, let's say or not just you but uh, all of us over here right how exactly organizations are getting impacted due to ransomware how much hefty fee they are paying and even after paying the hefty fee as well they do not have the clarity if they have got back the entire data if they have got back the entire things or still the intruder has a copy of it and they might be selling it off we also saw that how exactly these ransomware attacks actually led to a woman uh, uh, let's say a woman's death as well in germany because her hospital was rerouted and then she went to a 30 km away hospital and on the way she died that is what we studied from the history and once we said from the history we understood that okay uh, yes this is what exactly is happening how it's happening we went through a uh, uh, let's say an attack pattern how exactly a ransomware goes around inside your network how exactly it goes inside your network and accordingly uh, let's say exfiltrates the data outside and we also got to know one more thing that ransomware initially used to work in that particular fashion where uh, they will just encrypt the data that's it 
they will not do anything else they will just encrypt the data gone and then they will ask that okay please give me the key and accordingly let's say we'll get done but today first of all they are exfiltrating your data first of all they're exfiltrating your data second they are maintaining presence in your systems they are maintaining presence in your systems which might be unimpacted or let's say unaffected right now and you think that okay those are unimpacted those are unaffected systems so let's keep it like that not at all those systems might have got impacted you might not have known it because those things will not have this uh, let's say um, the the pop ups that okay the thing has been encrypted or something like that now once let's say you they have maintained the persistence they have uh, let's say exploited data that is when you will see a pop up stating that okay now it is encrypted now you pay the ransom on this particular bitcoin address and accordingly let's say you have to pay then we saw once we understood the entire history the entire background we saw what exactly is the ransomware how exactly it operates we saw one of the uh, let's say one of the biggest ransomware attacks which has happened the entire scenario we saw that uh, let's say what what exactly they will do they will have a wall of shame and how exactly they can put it across and then we saw the detection and the prevention techniques as well now the detection and the prevention techniques can help you can help all of us if we understand the basics of it now we have to understand the basic over here that what exactly we are trying to protect we are trying to protect first of all the availability of the data and that is the very reason why people are saying create backups create as much backups as you can but if you are creating a live backup then it might be possible that this intruder this malware might have gone into your backups as well so you have to be extra cautious over there that's why organize say offline backup offline backup as well needs to be maintained but then again it just will help you with the availability but it's not a mitigation technique the mitigation techniques are so many or the, when i say mitigation techniques it means uh, the proactive approaches are so many where i'm saying that okay you have to patch all the systems all the servers and all those things the rdp ports the vdi the smb ports and all please make sure that it's closed okay these things are not vulnerable at all it's very easy to say but hard to implement right and that is the way reason why we always need to keep an eye on all of our public facing systems now it's not just the public facing systems where i have the web server it can be even your emails as well it can be even let's say an attachment which is getting downloaded on your system it can even be a password vault which you thought was free and a uh, freeware which is there inside the market but might be having some malware or the other which is quite challenging daunting as well but yeah challenging as well at the end of the day right and that's when we saw that okay a ransom which is how exactly it works and what exactly prevention detection techniques all of us you and me can deploy and accordingly let's say help our uh, organizations before i go to the q and a and of course you guys can use the chat box uh, for the q and a as well uh, let me tell you about uh, one of the very uh, famous um, ransomware which is happening or let's say which is prevalent in the in the world which is the maze ransomware now uh, the maze ransomware uh, many of us would have uh, heard about this as well it was one of the first ransomware which was uh, st which started selling actually the stolen data and and majority of these ransomware if you'll see they will be industry specific and this particular maze ransomware was industry or let's say is industry specific to technological providers public services managed service providers and all it will go via your emails or let's say rdp brute force it will perform a credential theft move laterally to access resources and exfiltrate data and then deploy the ransomware the two fold approach which i told you about it will use like let's say a few of the tools like the cobalt strike a psx as well okay and the uh, the really daunting thing the, the the really unique thing is uh, with this particular ransomware is that it means maintains a fileless persistence using scheduled tasks because what is what is a scheduled task it means that okay if let's say whenever your system when your server boots up 
at that time whatever uh, let's say you might be having whatever uh, services whatever scripts you might be running right it 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 maintains its persistence using those scheduled tasks and the services okay and accordingly it launches its powershell based upon the same so it uses your windows remote management and also so whenever let's say you will have the maze ransomware it will go and enable or let's say switch on the uh, windows remote management service so that whenever they want they can connect and accordingly perform more exploitation on the same so so it was a very uh, good thing uh, when i say good thing it means from a hacker perspective it was a good thing for us it's it's not at all so on that particular note let's uh, go on and see if you guys have any questions um and accordingly we can uh, answer if we can all right thank you so much kaushik so we've got couple of questions from the customers we have the audience here on this particular webinar so first question is from anirudh verma is asking about do we have to trust our antiviruses for preventing us from ransomware uh antivirus will be one of the mechanism not not all antivirus first of all let's go with this not all antivirus because if you see over here uh they have different means of access into your environment into your technology into your system so if it's getting let's say we are the emails then you should have uh, an email uh, solution over there deployed if you uh, if that particular uh, thing is getting uh, into your system we are usb drive then of course your host based solution might be able to help you so i will say that just relying on a host based solution like an antivirus might not be able to help you like a common signature based uh, go for more like a machine learning or an ai based uh, antivirus solution which will be able to prevent you from zero day attacks as well and if any of these uh, let's say the like we are, we were talking about that okay they are they are maintaining the persistence they were changing the services they are changing the startup services and all your machine learning and the ai based uh, solutions will be monitoring all these things and accordingly will raise an alert in case of anything goes wrong so over here it's not just about the solution which can uh, which which can be uh, implemented it's also about how much you are uh, uh, let's say uh, responding in the case if you see that okay there is an alert there is a log or let's say there is an event it happens bharat thank you so much kashik for the detailed explanation so we have got another question from anirudh uh he's asking i have installed angry ip on my system for practicing some network scanning on demo site so do i need to uninstall it now when i am not using it absolutely oh. so angry ip first of all yeah so angry ip and all will uh, help you for network scanning as as he rightly said he'll help you for the open ports and all uh it's better that if you are uh, using the same system inside your corporate network as well then uh, do not uh, have it on a system just install it when you need and then uh, uh, delete it at all the times because uh, just imagine if somebody or the other gets uh, gets inside the network and he has all of these tools available at their disposal how how bad it can get okay so in a similar manner like let's say organizations who have uh, for pen testing and all have a uh, kali operating systems and all uh, hosted uh please disable or say please uh, remove those servers when you are not using it uh, please do not do that and uh, whenever you are performing this penetration test uh, scans and all uh please make sure that uh, let's say your uh, people or let's say your assigned solutions are actually on alert and whenever you are doing the pt uh, that's when they correlate that yes it's you only who is performing the pt because just understand from this perspective a uh, majority of the ransomware attacks what has happened these things didn't happen in one or two days these guys were maintaining persistence in your uh, let's say in all of our servers in all of our systems from the past 6 to 8 months and that's how ransomware goes ransomware doesn't impact organizations just uh, let's say in one day or two day they will maintain persistence for 6 months 7 months 8 months 12 months and all and they will look out for the exact moment when exactly they can monetize their exfiltration so likewise let's say right now they might have impacted some healthcare provider or let's say uh, one year back they might have impacted some healthcare provider now at that time covid 19 was not that much right but today if let's say the same covid 19 vaccination or something like that gets impacted 
then of course they will be having a high mon monetization value over there so that's how they, these guys work but got it so we have next question from nalin gurg is asking if your application is entirely hosted on a third party cloud like it's your are the paths of ransomware attack which is initial access to lateral movement to rest of the steps are still going to be the same or what where does the segregation of responsibility lie in such case say between microsoft to keep their cloud infrastructure protected and the hosted organization okay so first of all uh, uh, the first thing over here should be uh, what your responsibility matrix which you are having with the cloud service provider now that is a very uh, important document actually for organizations to maintain that how exactly is your shared responsibility being maintained what all things you have to configure what all things they have to configure uh, at a at, at at a very uh, lenient manner uh, the cloud service providers will always say they don't have access to your data they are not responsible for your data security they'll be responsible for the infrastructure security they'll be responsible for the network security and all those things now lateral movement lateral movement can still be the same why because let's say you might be having security groups you might be having app ip tables you might be having nacls over there which is which has to be configured by you if you haven't configured it then azure will not help you with anything else there are many such cases or many use cases which i just told you about many of them were hosted on cloud as well okay so uh, if that that particular process is running the cloud also might think that okay it's a normal process which is running inside your uh, environment because your admins have allowed it or let's say because somebody or the else have allowed it because you also have to see that they are also doing credential theft now once they have done the credential theft after that even the cloud service provider will think that this particular thing is a legitimate process a legitimate uh, uh, let's say solution a legitimate uh, uh, let's say steps which are being followed by the org organization and accordingly they can uh, let's say do it off as well so at the end solution over here is look at the responsibility matrix the attack pattern might or let's say 90% of the times will remain the same as well it's the security which you can implement by yourself and keep the data encrypted or keep the data secure at all the times because that is will always be your responsibility that will never be the responsibility of the particular cloud service provider bharat all right thank you for the detailed explanation kaushik uh, we have got a next question from mr amit kumar patel his question is can we have the recording of this session absolutely yes so it would be released on our youtube channel by thursday this week only and the next question is from mr bharat narayan can implementing scrubbing centers prevent from these attacks and so far it can so how far it can prevent um it won't be able to okay so uh, that won't be able to prevent but uh, means after something has happened it will be able to uh, but not beforehand because as you can see these attacks are going uh, well beyond sophistication over here we might not even know uh, when exactly these attacks came inside my network or when exactly are they maintaining persistence and uh, let's say how exactly these guys are moving ahead so i will suggest that even uh, apart from the scrubbing techniques as well uh, i will say have ai and ml based solutions deployed which are monitoring your uh, services your processes and all so to secure yourself okay so we have very good questions coming up so the next question is uh, from ms deepa shrestha uh she is asking that will soc monitoring is going to prevent from ransomware attack detect not prevent so uh, okay. how is that detection will happen is that, that i told you initially that uh, let's say there are many different tools there are many different uh, let's say rdp ports and all those things uh, which if you see if it's open then there is a high potential that uh, let's say a ransomware attack might be in place or let's say it, it, it might be happening at the back end okay that is where it helps you with the detection that this might uh, this this particular ransomware this particular thing might be happening so if you remember the the particular slide where we were talking about the different uh, use cases just let me go back over there on the slide uh, yeah this one so using this you can Uh, let's say configure your SIEM solution that if they find that okay there's an RDP brute force which is uh, being done or let's say there are internet facing systems which you have which are unpatched 
uh, and accordingly something or the other is trying to exfiltrate or you are having weak application settings uh, miss, uh, of course we we are let's say the cvids and all those things um, and accordingly the cis benchmarking tools as well help you with the same or you are getting a lots of phishing emails and all this will be or this should be a trigger that okay a ransomware attack might happen and you need to perform the rca on the same okay so that's how you will be able to prevent this all right uh, thank you Kaushik. we have got a next question from anu energy so uh, the question is in the current work from home scenario where most of us are no more on office network what is the suggested preventive approach for ransomware attacks zero trust based security uh, that is one of the best possible solutions uh, which is there in the market right now uh, started with uh, i think it was google in, um, in in 2010 something like that when uh, they got impacted uh, with um, i don't know what was the name of the malware or the campaign uh, which hit them and accordingly they came up with a zero zero trust based security architecture uh, so that each and every host each and every server will be authenticating uh, every user nobody will be relying on anything else okay each and every host is a standalone that's what the best approach for the work from home solutions. But awesome. So next question is from Gokula one Jairaman. His question is why antivirus or cyber security partners are not able to help in decryption post ransomware attack. It's understood that data theft would have happened. At least companies critical data would be back. Okay. So first of all, we have to understand it from both a legitimate and Ill illegitimate perspective, right? Understand it from a legitimate perspective. You are keeping PII data, a personally identifiable information, a unique PII data inside your organization. You are encrypting it. You will encrypt it with such a way that nobody should be able to decrypt it, right? Till, till the time you haven't got access to the keys. Now that is the ethical way of performing the encryption and accordingly doing the thing but this particular methodology is available worldwide and of course you have to understand the hackers uh, will always be one step ahead from the defenders that's why they are able to exploit it so it means that they are using an upgraded version of these encryption technologies so the real question the the, the, the real solution over here is that nobody can help you or let's say majority of the solutions might not be able to help you with decryption of that particular data till the time there is a no wise or let's say script kiddie who just uh, let's say who is just using something or the other but they are also using highly sophisticated encryption technologies as well like let's say if i am using an elliptic curve uh, cryptography for the encryption and decryption now that el elliptic of the ecc uh, cryptography is one of the highest sophisticated encryption technologies which are available in the market and it's being sold of course or it's, it's it's being used so that the organization is secure their their pi data, data is secure how exactly we are using it it depends on both the cases so an antivirus might not be a solution for decryption at that time Bharat. okay so next question is from devashi sahu could you please shed some light on the recent foxconn ransomware attack uh we can talk offline because right now i don't think that we have time for that but yeah absolutely we can do it offline we yeah. have got a couple of more questions just a quick one so next question is from mr bharat narayanan can blockchain be the antidote to the ransomware uh no blockchain is a different thing blockchain is a completely different thing blockchain is uh what they say uh it's a ledger Correct. It's a, it's a ledger based technology uh, which will help you in um, uh, let's say relying one party can rely on the other party and accordingly they can build blocks and communicate with each other that's what blockchain is uh, that that's more for communication rather than uh, this particular phenomena of, of ransomware so both the things are uh, different or separate, separate separate in nature altogether Okay, Bhavya has a question. Why don't we conduct ethical ransomware attacks like bug bounty programs to get a good knowledge of where a vulnerability lies? Absolutely. So that's why organizations are also requested to basically go ahead for uh, red teaming exercises as well. If the organization can go for red teaming exercise, then they'll be able to understand uh, that if 
let's say some or uh, because because your red team will always try or will also try to perform a ransomware attack as well inside your organization then accordingly you will be able to uh, measure up your uh, solution or let's say your uh, public endpoints or let's say your endpoint solution and, and accordingly you will be protect yourself Bharat? now namrata's question is rdp monitoring one way can be done via siem splunk kirida hmm. etc etc correct yeah and the query is is there any other way to do that you have to continuously scan your systems right uh, means let's say from the public ips and all because uh, again uh, you have to understand so you have to think from an intruder perspective the intruder is also trying to scan your public ip and accordingly he or she is trying to get inside your environment similarly the same frequency or with an increased frequency you have to scan your systems so as to see what will op open ports do i have what will open systems what will open services are running and accordingly start blocking or protecting those solutions similarly on the same thing goes for inside as well now for the inside the frequency can change like let's say for outside for my vulnerable systems many of the organizations are doing a daily scan believe me they are doing a daily scan so as to identify that okay what will one vulnerable ports what are vulnerable services are running on my public ips okay now for the internal systems as the threat vector is less i can do let's say once in a week or once in two days or once in three days scanning uh, and accordingly i'll be able to understand my open ports my open services and all those things but got it thank you so much kaushik so since we already are six minutes past from our due time and the time is up we have to wrap up this particular session i request you to please take this survey post the end of this session and for any queries please write it to me bharat.malik at the rate csinfosec.com we'll be happy to take up your queries offline and uh, i hope you all have liked the session and we'll be coming up with more such sessions in the coming days and we'll be sending out the uh, invitations to all of you thank you everyone for this wonderful uh session even to the participants and the organizers as well so we'll be looking forward to your uh, full service thank you so much take care